is the club room. It's part of the Indian Academy. The mission here, not just with this event, but in general, is really to help um, really athletes and, and non-athletes uh, really understand and make that pivot from what they were doing, whether it was a sport or something else, into something that they really are excited about, that fantastic next great career and chapter in their life. Thanks so much for being here today. Really appreciate it. Um, now I'm going to bring in uh, two, two guys who, um, again, I've known for a little while. I'm going to start with uh, Brendan Harris. And Brendan, um, he's uh, originally from New York State. He was drafted in the fifth round back in 2001. Um, he played for a few different teams, had a fantastic career. On his way out, he retired back in 2013. And I remember distinctly him telling me his experiences with um, you know, the services that he was offered um, as a transitioning uh, Major League Baseball player. He is now currently the Director of Athlete Development with X10 Capital. It's a really cool premise and a great company. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. Um, Brendan, I hope I didn't butcher too much of that, but thanks for being here and why don't you come on in. And then batting second is Grant. Uh, Grant Clitsum from up in Ontario, Canada. And, um, and we did a, an event together with uh, the Dartmouth uh, um, Next Step program for elite athletes and elite uh, military. It was a fantastic event. We really talked about sort of life with the transition and stuff. He's, uh, um, he played in the NHL for several years. He went to Clarkson University, which played for the Blue Jackets, played for the Winnipeg Jets. He's up in that neck of the woods now. Um, and in fact, he's got a big time Winnipeg Jets event tonight, which he's gearing up for. He's really excited about. Right now, he's uh, the director of the After the Game program. He's with One Sports um, up in Canada. And Grant, come on in. Go ahead, say it. I don't think we ever lost to Colgate, but I, didn't I knew you were going to say that. I knew, was, yeah, I knew that was coming. Anyways, <laughs> I'm going to have to look that up eventually. Anyways, <laughs> gentlemen, thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Um, what I've been doing with some of the other guests so far today is really having um, having everyone discuss a little bit more about their experiences with their transition, transition specifically, and and also some of the advice that they would give. Brendan, I'm going to start with you. You know, you had a nice career in the bigs. You, um, you know, obviously you know, as you played and so forth, and you became a more of a sort of a grizzled veteran and you, you, you know, you, you saw the young guys coming in and so forth. Tell me a little bit about your situation when, when did you start sensing that, or did you start sensing that you were nearing the end of your career or, or just kind of happened like that? Yeah. Uh, thanks for having me, Mark. Uh, you know, I actually, I, I did have a few uh, forgettable years after 2013 and, and so I was, that, that I was still playing and, I think it was over the course of those two years where, uh, you know, I thought I, I, obviously the, the the prime earning and the best years of my career were probably behind me. I thought I still could play and fill a role in a major league club, but I did want to, you know, start preparing for the next step. And um, for me, uh, when I was an undergrad, uh, I, I got drafted after my junior year. And my junior year, I, I was kind of switching from uh, changing majors from like a government political science major to a business major. And so I got, I was fascinated on the business side. And because I got drafted after my junior year, when I'm back, I went in consecutive falls and I had to take spring semester off. I wasn't able to take all the, uh, you know, uh, records of courses to major in it. So it kind of left something hanging where I was like, you know what, 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 if I do get a chance, depending on how long I play, I do want to go back to school and like pursue more of a business degree. And uh, so that was a little bit of the gen stuff playing in 2015. Uh, I started looking at getting my MBA. At that time, I was 35. Uh, I thought I w had aged myself out of going full time. And so I started looking at executive, these executive programs. Uh, and so, you know, as, as most uh, type athletes would do, I, 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 you know, I took a big swing and I, you know, applied to the everything, applied to Wharton and uh, got in and thought that was going to refresh my skill set and, and, and give me access to a far bigger and different network than athletics had. And, I, you know, when I got out of there, I was going to be able to bridge the two and, and I was going to have a lot more opportunities. And so that was my thinking in terms of, you know, building, expanding and polishing that skill set, but also having access to a new network. So um, when you said you took a big swing and you, and you took a chance at that and so forth, I mean, Warden is not exactly a um, bad school. That's pretty damn good. Um, and I'm assuming you, you, you gained a lot of knowledge that really sort of helped you get
get into what you're doing now, but it really, did it help you sort of kind of clarify what you wanted to do going forward or did it still muddle things up? What was it like for that? Certainly provided me with, uh, a, 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 I felt like widen the, the, the playing field, the map or however you want to say in, in, in how I really fascinated with the venture and private equity world and just in, in you know, knowing the market and creating value for someone. And, and, um, uh, I, so I got exposed to that and then the people in it, um, more importantly, and, and gave me access to be able to kind of take the next step. And that's, you know, I'm sure we'll get talking about, but, uh, the, the biggest thing for me was work, starting to work with 76 capital while I was in school and right after school, getting that first opportunity really as a sports tech, uh, focus mm -hmm. venture capital firm and it's, you know, but getting that, you know, opportunity outside of a, of a team was huge for me. And even on a entrepreneur and residence base, great first opportunity out, uh, which, which was huge for me. Uh, that's really cool. I mean, getting, getting a chance is really the big, the big thing here, the big clutch thing. So Grant, tell me a little bit about your situation. I mean, you played again for, you played for several seasons and, uh, had a nice career, but then tell me how things wound down with you. Yeah, I had a career-ending back injury, so I um, I went the NCAA route too, which for hockey is, uh, I wouldn't say common, but I wouldn't say rare. It's, it's probably now there's about 50% of the players go that route. Um, so I went NCAA, and fortunately I had an undergrad degree in my back pocket, but um, you know, I hadn't been in school for 10 years, and I've uh, been playing pro and, and kind of just focusing on that career. And um, yeah, unfortunately, I had a craning back injury, uh, had two back surgeries. And after the second one, the doctor said I should stop playing. So um, that's where it kind of just all came to a screeching halt. And then it was like, what's next? So, um, you know, I didn't really have any kind of time to prepare, I guess. But uh, what I tell a lot of the, the players I work with and a lot of friends that I played with is, uh, you know, to, to make sure you take advantage of your time while you're playing to prepare instead of just waiting until the end. Well, and, and so what led you to towards what you're doing now? What was it? What, what got you excited or interested in that? Uh, I kind of went down a, a long and windy path. Uh, I think my um, my philosophy when I finished playing was really just to keep my feet moving. I think, uh, you know, if I was to sit on my couch and, and dwell on what could have been and, and how much longer maybe my career would have went or, you know, what, what could have happened, it would have brought me down a slippery slope. And so I just wanted to keep moving forward and try things. And I, I thought um, by getting my feet wet and trying different things, it might narrow down a field of interest that uh, would bring me to where I am. And um, so I, I went back to school. I did my MBA also. Um, I started a couple businesses. Um, I did my sommelier degree. Uh, so I, I did a whole bunch of different things just to kind of stay stimulated and stay active. And then uh, I started talking with um, with a friend of mine who's now my partner and he was my wealth manager at the time who's at One Sports Entertainment. And uh, he suggested that I come on board and, and help create a program for uh, their clients um, to help them transition from being an athlete to life after sports. So that's kind of how it started and um, still going. I also starting to dip my toes into the wealth management side of things. So just continually trying to do new things and try new things and narrow down that path. That's, that's great. And, you know, uh, we were just chatting a little bit earlier, but uh, unfortunately COVID has thrown a curveball to all of us on, on sort of taking next steps with some things. I mean, it's, it's given some people opportunities and, and, but most of us have been sort of held back a little bit. Hopefully that starts pivoting around soon. But, um, but Brendan, um, I guess, you know, in terms of, because, you know, I, I remember when, one of the first times we chatted, I asked you a little bit about, you know, when you left the sport, when you left baseball, and they had a, a program available, I guess. But tell me a little bit about, I mean, I don't mean to put people on the spot here, but you know, tell me a little bit about like, like the service that you were, I mean, what were, what were people offering to you and saying to you, hey, we'll help you with your transition? Or was that really happening or not really? Or tell me about that. Uh, a, a little bit, and, and uh, yeah, I think I told you it left a lot to be desired. And, and I, I feel like they just gave me a Myers-Briggs and, and, and a, uh, a a, some, a resume workshop uh, and then kind of called it a day. I didn't know what I didn't know in terms of like, 
what was out there and the, the different things. And, 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 and I knew that I had a bunch of different interests and, and, uh, but you, you know, and I, I, having a mentor at that period would have been a little bit. What was the NHL telling you or offering you, or did they say click on this or what was, what was, the, what was that program like? Um, well, speaking from my personal experience, uh, I mean, I didn't, I didn't really have anybody reach out to me, uh, to offer me anything. Um, mm. I'm sure if I had kind of seeked it out, I probably could have got some help, but I think that's kind of one of the biggest disconnects and one of the, the biggest issues, um, with those services is that, uh, you know, a lot of the players are, are either unaware or just, um, not really motivated to reach out for help or, or ask for help. So, um, you know, that's one of the catalysts of why uh, I was brought on into my role. And that was just the engagement piece to be able to be a, an ex player who can relate and, um, uh, have those conversations with, uh, with our clients. And, um, I think the, the league is doing better now with some transition work. Um, I, I talked to quite a few people there since I've started doing what I'm doing and, you know, they're working really hard at it, but it's, uh, I, a lot of the onus is on the athlete. I mean, there, there's got to be a willingness to want to ask for help or to want to work at transitioning because it's work. It's not just something that's going to happen. You can't just flip a switch, get a job, and, and call it the next chapter of your career. So it's. Um, I think that's probably one of the biggest challenges we face is just that engagement. That's, that's interesting. Hey, listen, um, just I want to jump in and ask this quick question because uh, Bud Norris, who um, – He's just now leaving baseball, but he wants to know uh, from, uh, especially from you, Brennan, you know, what was it like going back to school and what was that thought process like? Like what made you decide, gee, you know what? I really want to go back. I just felt like I wanted to be retrained for, you know, for me, it'd been 14 years since I've been in school. And so I, I wanted to be retrained for, uh, you know, today's jobs and in today's opportunities. Uh, it was grad school, but it, the, you know, being back in school did feel like you were ten years late for the prom, uh, a little bit. And where you know, where you, you, you have kids and you're like carrying a book bag and still going in, you know, at the same time. So, um, I loved it. I had a great experience, and um, you, you know, I, I probably agree. Where totally different dynamic with your professors, and and, and I, you know, you do have a new network, and you do get to meet a lot of new and interesting people within the program, but the professors, especially in business school, who kind of straddle that line between academia and the private sector, uh, my, my network, come, you know, just from them alone was was, was far better, um, and, but I, I would advise people, and there's a few people um, that have actually hit me up that are trying to go back to school, like, don't you don't need a specific plan but have like a little bit of a direction uh that you want to go on so you can direct your fire in a way once you do get to school make make the most of your time there don't just kind of roll in there something and, and think but but i you know highly recommend it and and uh got a lot out of it uh, personally i think that's great advice Brandon, because i think that um some people it's almost like um some people i don't want to say um you know everybody but i think some people jump into school just because they're bored and they're like well, i don't know what else to do i'm just going to go to school and you're right i think if you go in with a little bit of a plan of saying look i'm going to study this 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 and this and then be able to emerge from it with this additional knowledge so that i can use that to go into blank or whatever it might be i think that's uh that's the spot there yeah i went back to school i did my mba um and kind of you know i think it's really good advice with brendan saying because uh, I think that was the one of the things I struggled with the most when I retired was that I, you know, as an athlete, you have all this drive and ambition and, mm -hmm. and work ethic. Yeah. You just don't know where to channel it. So for me, um, it was to go back and, and kind of brush up on on the business side of stuff, but also a little bit to take me out of my comfort zone and put me into a, a corporate environment. You know, I, I did the executive program as well. So there was a lot of seasoned executives in the program and, uh, you know, people with a lot of experience to learn from and kind of see if I could hold my own and, uh, you know, pull myself out of the comfort zone, I think helped me a lot. What was it that brought you out of the comfort zone? I mean, when you say comfort zone, what was like, what was it especially hard or challenging? That's my comfort zone is sports. Not yeah, the board yeah. board. So I think that was the big thing. Like I, I felt great on the ice. I felt great in the dressing room. I felt great around the team, but put me around a uh, vice president of a company and a uh, general manager of another company. And I feel like I maybe I'm a fish out of water. So just being in that environment and, you know, a lot of the, 
the program was teams based, which uh, was a big advantage for me and kind of helped me feel comfortable. And then right away, I started to realize that there were a lot of a lot of skills that I had that I just took for granted because of my years of playing sports and being in a team and being in that kind of competitive environment and uh, started to build my confidence. That's what helped a lot. Grant, um, right now with with the, some of the athletes that you sort of interact with and work with, what do you see is one of their biggest things? Like what are, what are, what are some of the things that they really need more help with? Um, one is the engagement and wanting to do it. It's, it feels like you're chasing them a lot and uh, you might get that initial call or that initial reach out and you have a great first conversation and then it's just trying to get them back at the table. And so that's one thing. And, and I think there's maybe a lot of factors to that uh, comfort uh, time, um, all kinds of different things. But I think uh, it's interesting because there's a real mix of either knowing exactly what you want to do and just, finding help to, to achieve that goal, whether it's starting a business or um, purchasing a business or something like that, or uh, players that have no idea what they want to do. And then it's starting from scratch and trying to figure that out. So um, it's a real mix and it's really interesting, um, but challenge is the engagement, trying to, to get players to understand that it's work. It's not going to happen overnight. I think many athletes, uh they feel that they, they've become elite at a, at a sport and then they feel like, okay, well, I'm going into something else. I should be coming in at this level kind of a thing. And sometimes they're caught off guard by having to go at the bottom. But on the flip side, others expect to be at the bottom, but I try to explain to them, listen, you don't need to start at the very bottom. You've already got years of experience in a professional environment, in this case as an athlete, but you've been effectively working for years. You should be able to come in at least at a middle range. And so many of the companies that, that are, that are looking to hire people, they tend to want to hire former athletes because of the, so, so many of the things that they bring that non-athletes non don't, right? So whether it's the tenacity, the ability to pivot immediately, the ability to be in front of an audience, the ability to perform under pressure, you know, calmly under pressure, right? There's so many different things that I think a lot of times an athlete takes for granted because they are so used to doing it that non-athletes don't necessarily understand. So I, I think that's one thing that you know, I, Brendan, I started to ask you a question earlier, and I, you had told me initially your concern about when you went to school, back to school, that you were competing against, or your classmates were these other sort of executives that had years of experience, and you felt like you were behind them. But then as you were there longer, you realized, wait a second, I'm actually going past these guys and, and men and women. You know, you're, you're outperforming them. And, you know, do you think it was because of some of that athletic skill set, or was it just that you outworked them or what was it? Tell me about your experience with that. I think many, many of us have had to already perform at a high level. And so w w once you know the game and, and you can settle in and prepare accordingly. And, and what I realized is you can teach me to do a, a discounted cash flow analysis. And, but you can't, um, it, it was just as tough to teach some of these other people how to lead in a group and then how to speak and, and present in front of people, how to negotiate uh and, and, and communicate how to read people i i remember hearing shane Batty speak one time about ex-players it's like it's just you know developing relationships and dealing with people and finding out um you know what what are their needs and how do you meet them and then how you know how do you create value for for somebody's organization uh or organization and uh and then and then you know kind of go from there but um I experienced some of the same things my first year in, in business school. Where I was like, ah, I feel way behind. But then year two, I, I felt like I was sprinting through the tape. Grant, when you were when you were getting your MBA, was, was it a similar situation? Did you feel when you were there that, wow, look at all these people? That, or were you, were you, did you feel like you're on even footing? No, I think when I started, I was, uh, you know, it's funny. You were talking about earlier, Mark, with uh, some of the athletes you work with and um, thinking that, the athlete comes to you thinking they need to start at the bottom and you tell them that they don't because they they might not have the traditional work experience, but uh, they have a lot of life experience. And that's kind of how I felt when I started my MBA. I felt like I, you know, I should be at the bottom. And I felt, uh, you know, I've been out of school for 10 years and I couldn't keep up with the rest of these executives. But quickly you start to realize you get into these team settings and you start to see how people uh, deal with pressure, how people deal with deadlines, how people deal with managing their time. 
um, how people recognize strengths in other people in the class and can utilize those strengths to benefit the team. And, you know, all these skills as an athlete, you're, you're around for so much of your life that it becomes second nature. I think that's what really started to give me confidence. And I think, um, you know, we talked about it earlier, but the, the comfort zone and the confidence was in my sport, but outside of my sport, I didn't have that same confidence. And going back to school um, helped build that confidence, not just academically, but uh, it's certainly in the team dynamics and realizing that I could uh, hold my own. That's perfect. Why don't each of you, if you don't mind, I'd love it if you could, uh, Brandon, we'll start with you. If you could, um, I know you've already given some really great, uh, some insight here, but give me some, uh, maybe a piece of advice or two that you'd offer just anybody, whether it's a current or athlete or somebody in their 20s and 30s that sort of have a lot of their career or their new career maybe in front of them. What, what's something that you would, would, would suggest that they do now? Yeah, we've already talked about a little bit about it. I'd say, you know, build your network, find mentors, cast a wide net. And then the other thing that I found out the hard way is that, it, uh, at least in the transition, is that you have to be comfortable that this second act, if you will, of your career isn't going to be the same linear path that, that, you know, baseball or hockey is where everybody understands that you're going to start here. You're going to, you, you play better, you move up, play better, you move up. And then ultimately you're at that, that level. And then, you know, um, you, you go from there and it's going to zigzag a little bit. And I think some of the frustration was, yeah, I, I, I'd agree with both the points you guys have made in, in terms of most players are, I think, willing to put the time and work in, but I think a lot of them get unsettled with not knowing what the where what or where the final destination is and in understanding you know uh because in, in the dislocation from sports to that in terms of like where where they need to go and so being okay with hey i'm just going to keep working and i'm going to keep moving the ball forward and it goes where it goes but i'm going to kind of keep you know creating value for where, where, wherever stop i'm at and that uh, i'm comfortable that i'll get there that's great. I like that. That's really good. Um, well stated. How about you, Grant? Yeah, I'd agree with all of that. And then I would also add to to just like not be afraid to try things. I think, uh, you know, I, I guess I'll speak from a hockey player's perspective and, and everyone's different. I'm, very, I'm generalizing quite a bit here, but they're, you know, you're kind of conditioned to be a team player and to kind of stay within the rules and to, you know, do what's best for the team. If you don't really like to have a spotlight on you or kind of be that person who's promoting themselves or trying to, um, you know, create a, an image for themselves or, or sell themselves. And so I think they might have like a bad association with selling and thinking that it's, you know, maybe not um, like the right thing for them to be doing. And they're afraid to, to do it. They're afraid to try it. And so I think a lot of uh, friends that I've had that have gone through the transition, they kind of just sit at home and, and they reach out to mentors and they reach out to networks and they, and they they grow their network, but they never actually do anything. They never actually take that step and try it. And I think that's the biggest thing is just that fear, like overcoming that fear of the unknown and, and that linear path that you talked about, Brendan, and um, really just putting yourself out there and, and seeing what happens. And so that's the biggest thing for me is just overcoming that fear and, and actually doing something. Do you find that, is it because there's a hesitancy to ask? Like, is it like, is it something where maybe, again, I said this in a previous panel, you don't want to appear to not necessarily know things. So you just kind of don't ask it. You just kind of, and then you, you miss your opportunity, you know, <clears throat> I mean. Yeah, because you're, you're taken out of the dressing room and the locker room. And so those are like kind of sanctuaries where guys are free to kind of say, Hey, this is what's going on, whether it's on the field or in your personal life. And, uh, you know, and then you mix in the pandemic and everything's through zoom anyway. Uh, so th th there's a, a different dynamic to kind of having coffee, a drink or breaking bread with somebody where you, you, you can break down those barriers and the fear there, there, you know, whether it's, you know, a text or a call, I, I, I think, um, networking and doing things in person and going to play golf. And I, I, I make this recommendation every, especially to, to uh, major league teams where there's, you know, Arizona, Florida, or, you know, Atlanta area where there's a lot of ex players that kind of settle in. 
you know, f throw up a, a, a suite and once a month have just just to have it open to alumni to come in and just kind of have a drink and, and, and network with each other. What are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? That That's where I think uh, a lot of ideas and help and can can come from. Uh, and guys will follow up because that's a, a really good point that Grammy is that people are networking, but they're not creating an action plan to kind of springboard from that, which is a huge, huge element of, of uh, you know, taking that next step. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's you know, it's the ability to, um, to step outside your comfort zone. And I think, you know, it, it's, it's not, it feels unnatural to an athlete to, I guess when you've been at like the pinnacle of your career and, and the, the highest in your sport to feel like you're stepping into something that you don't understand anything about or have any experience or track record in and, and put yourself kind of, you know, be a little vulnerable and put yourself out there to failure. And, um, but it's, it's that committing to something that I think is so important. So having that action plan and being able to, to have steps. And I think that, that, structure something that athletes gravitate towards is something you you have throughout your whole career so to have some kind of structure on your plan and some kind of support network and um you know steps i think help a lot small goals eventually lead to to bigger goals and so it's it's just baby steps to get out there and do things and build your confidence look i think one of the most important one of the most important things to do in a in any sort of networking kit capacity is to to have a plan right to have an action plan like if you're an event like this say to yourself well you know what i'm going to try to speak to at least one person or two people or three people that can introduce me to other people that can really help my business so you know brendan it might be if you're thinking well is there anybody here that might have a, a, somebody that they know who's tied in with a a ball player who either being drafted a certain spot or, or needs some or is already an established ball player but wants blah 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 that sort of thing and maybe you know um granted might be well just, you know are there some some other athletes out there that are looking for any sort of financial represent whatever it might be but if you go have an action plan when you go into these events and conversations i think that's so important versus just kind of like winging it and you know sort of seeing what happens kind of a thing um but look i want to i want to tie things back together here to um Number one, Brendan, tell me a little bit about your work with X10 because I don't think too many people know about it and understand it and so forth. So if you could explain that a little bit, that'd be great. Yeah, we're a, we're a private equity company that invests in right now, uh, Major League Baseball players and NFL players at early stages of their careers for a percentage of future earnings. Um, we uh, wait for guys to break through the major leagues and in, into the NFL, so no minor leaguers or, or combine stars. And we invest in them to give them the kind of financial security and the leverage to be able to kind of accrue service time and get to free agency and turn down those kind of below market team friendly deals and then get to free agency and really cash in. So it, it, it's been very vogue in, in, in uh, the major leagues for the last several years where these small and mid market teams uh, a guy, you know, a guy comes in, has a good rookie year, good second year, and they extend him to a, in, in turning down a five year, six year for $25 million is really hard to do. So we give them, uh, um, invest in them, um, give them the, the kind of financial stability to be able to turn that deal down, get to free agency and turn that deal into a five, six year deal for 85, $90 million. Um, and so we also work with them on, on kind of on the back end in terms of their training, their nutrition, their um, you know, kind of biomechanics and data analysis to make them better players or at least support, you know, what they're doing now. And so also that they're doing it in 10 years. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it's a really, you know, great firm. And uh, it's, it's been fun to, it, it's fun to work with, um, you know, a lot of players uh, that, you know, still in the game. And, and despite some of the things, it's, it's been really refreshing. I think, uh, you know, the NFL and, and Major League Baseball, uh, there's a lot of great, great young young players coming through. And, um, I, you know, I think the future is bright uh, for in both sports. And, and we're, you know, looking to get into the NBA and, and uh, NHL uh, in the next year. Too. Grant, there's your ticket right there, buddy. <laughs> um, I think. So, well, I, and that's it's really interesting because it's um, – I think that they're becoming some really creative ways to make sure and guarantee that certain athletes are, um, whether it's hedging their, hedging their bets and or maximizing their earning potential as they play. And I get the feeling that that's a lot of what you guys are doing, Brendan, right? 
yeah, we, we want these guys to have the financial security um, to, to maximize their career earnings. We want them to get paid what they're worth. Uh, and, and it's it's a business model that where all the incentives are aligned as opposed to the team where the team, yes, wants you to play well, but not too well so that you're unaffordable for them. And so our conversations are, how do we get you, you know, paid, as, as, you know, what you're worth? And, uh, you know, we have a really a great group around them and, and uh, former scouting director, uh, you know, Hal Morris and, um, and, and not only knows hitting, but knows how these front offices work and say, Hey, you know, these are the things that they're talking about and they're going to look at to be able to feel comfortable giving you that deal, you know, for five, six years for, you know, a hundred million dollars and let's target them individually, um, and, and get after it. And, and so, um, uh, yeah, so it's been, been really good partnerships. We, we cap our deals. So forever, you know, lucky enough to get a, a, a Garrett Cole type guy, we're going to cap our deals. So we're never going to be taking, you know, 10, 15% of, of that. We're, we'll cap ours like, you know, probably a third of that. And, uh, you know, so the deal is fair for, for all sides. That's really interesting. Thanks. I, I appreciate that, Brendan. Hey, before I forget, what's the best way for people to reach out to you? Uh, just LinkedIn or, or, or Twitter and, and, you know, pretty accessible or, uh, uh, or you through you. <laughs> Grant, tell me a little bit about your work with One Sports. Uh, yeah, so we're a wealth management firm. Uh, <clears throat> we specialize in athletes, entertainers. Uh, our main client base is uh, hockey players, as uh, you might guess. Uh, but we work with all athletes and entertainers. And um, really, we provide our clients with uh, full wealth management services, investment management, uh, risk protection, um, banking services, and <laughs> Uh, and then I'm also originally was brought on board to create the after game program to help, uh, you know, as a bit of a concierge service for athletes and connecting them with the proper resources for transitioning to life after sports. So really try and provide our, our clients with all types of services and, um, and uh, look after whatever they need. It's awesome. And same thing with you. Uh, people can reach you on LinkedIn and so on. Uh, what's the best way? Yeah. Twitter, LinkedIn, um, and you can check out our website too. It's in my profile, onesports.ca. Uh, explains a little bit more in detail about our services. Awesome, guys. I really appreciate your time. Uh, what a you know such such tremendous insight um, and and great advice. I think uh, and it's really interesting how each of you have you know you played a solid career. You went back. You got your master's degree, and now you're each sounds like you're each doing stuff that you really you really enjoy doing. And uh, it sounds like that your transition from your sport to your next great chapter is, is well underway. So I really appreciate you being on board here. Thanks for sharing your insight with everybody. And uh, hopefully you can hang for a few. And, and if other people have some questions, they can reach you at the tables. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, guys.